Oh, hello again, guys. Right, so <clears throat> last video, wired this up, got it all working. Um, at least I think I did. Uh, so this, the PID is currently showing. This is the set point, which is the desired temperature, and this is the current temperature. So it's not 422 degrees Celsius in my kettle right now. Um, would you believe it? But I think this is coming up with the wrong temperature because this is currently set up with a, for a K type thermocouple. So the first job is to change over the sensor type to PT100. So um, I endeavored to do that most of today. If you check the K39 manual, it says to get to the configuration menus, it's a uh, passcode. So if you want to get to the configuration menus, you have to hold down P and it says pass. Bear in mind that there is a time limit on this. If you use the up and down buttons, you can change the number. It even has minuses, which is mental, and there's four digits. So the passcode could be anywhere between naught to 9,999 and also naught to minus 9,999. So um, anyway, back on track, I tried 30, didn't work. So if you try 30, it will not do anything. Let me show you. All it does is just return you to the original menu. You ready? There you go. So I contacted Rich uh, at eBay. Um, apparently I'm not the only one that's been asking this question. Uh, he managed to find a document online which was like a quick reference guide. Anyway, long story short, the passcode is 1381, which of course is really obvious. Um, can't believe I didn't think of that off the bat. So. And I have just checked it and it does work. So if you go enter 1381, thankfully this goes by pretty quickly. You can then enter and press P again. You now got the various options which you can, I believe, PT1. So I think maybe you press P to enter. I've got no idea past this point. So exit that. Um, and I th uh -huh. There you go. So apparently it is now reading 18 degrees. And you might be able to hear that if you listen carefully. My element has just flicked on. So this little highlighting light here is showing that this is now attempting to heat, which is weird because I've got the set point value at zero and that's currently 18. So, no, I don't want that. I'm going to change the set point to 20, see, 25, that'll do. Uh, all right. So the element's still on. So there may be some other parameters that need to be changed. So it's possible that what it's doing is heating and cooling. I don't know. I'm making this up as we go along. So I need to check the manual, check out the configurations. Now I've got the passcode, all good. So hopefully I've shown you how to change from the K-type thermocouple, which is the default option to the PT100 option, which is the sensor. Um, cool. I'll be back in a sec. 
Alright guys, <clears throat> I think I have sorted it. Um, after much reading of a very confusing manual and playing around with this thing. Um, when I first configured it, it started to turn on even when the temperature was above the value that I wanted it at. Excuse me. A, f a few home brews helped. Shout out to Steve Ogden for keeping me sane. Um, right, I'll talk you through what I did. So if you go into the passcode, uh, 1318, a famous year. There we go. Whoop. There we go. All right, so the sensor, you want to change to PT100. Um, this passcode entry, 1318, will not time out, uh, which is really helpful. So you don't have to worry about um, yeah, it timing out. So this is set for PT100. If you want, say, a K-type thermocouple, I think you can choose... I think it might be J. Um, one thing I will say, guys, uh, you're gonna need two really key things. So the quick reference guide um, that Rich from eBay sent to me that had the passcode in it also has um, all of the, the menu options you will get through the passcode 1318 there is another passcode in there which takes you to like the advanced level um configuration menu which you definitely don't want to do unless well certainly for your first first go at configuring it um you might want to get into that later as you start to develop your knowledge of this or whatever um but it gives you a quick reference in terms of what the what the options are and usefully it gives you a reference number for the um, section of the manual okay if you go through the manual that has every single part the same as I would imagine if you go into the advanced menu anyway all of that so I want PT100 so in terms of navigation you can change uh, whatever you want the value of it using the up and down keys um, if you press U, that will go back to the previous option, which is, in this case, sensor. Uh, if you press and hold U, that will exit the configuration mode. So, uh, I want PT1, so I'll press P to select that. Right, this is decimal point. So, if you guys really want decimal points, you can go right up to one decimal point. Um it actually, what I've found is it takes longer to toggle through uh, temperatures. Um, so if you're really that fast, then set one. If you're not, just set zero. I'm going to keep it on zero. Press P. Uh, units, you've got Celsius and Fahrenheit. Easy. P. Right. Output one. So given this has only got one SSR in it, you are only going to get one output. This PID can do heat and cool so in theory you could connect up um, a fridge to it if you wanted to or uh, some sort of cooling unit I don't know it's not what I want it for so I've set it to heating reg I don't know what that means this is the heating one this is the one you want yeah so select that this is output 2 set to none you can sc uh, scroll through you go to none right continuous this is where you need to change the options uh, to this on FA so this will ensure that it kind of flicks on and off to maintain the temperature that you set um, so select that uh, I left this as one I'm not even sure what that is uh, I set this to SSR as there is an SSR in here um, I don't think this really matters because this is effectively saying the set point, the lowest set point that you can set 
So you can change this to zero or whatever if you want, but it doesn't really matter because you're not going to have water, you're not cooling anything. This is the high point, 999. Since we're dealing with water here, you can't go above 100, um, as far as I know. Uh, so you can set that. To be honest, there is no other. Um, well, okay, I'll go through this last one. This is set point one. So I think this automatically sets the temperature at 40 degrees when I turn the unit on. Um, so you guys might want to use that feature. I've just set it to 40. I don't know why. Uh, I might change that later. So that's all the options you need to change. Press and hold U down. Okay. Right, I've got it at four, set at 40 degrees. It's heated to 40 degrees. Um, I'll be back in a second. I'll cool the water down and show you working it. Okay, I've just added some cold water to the kettle, so you can see it's just dropped one degree. This light here, which is next to number one, which is for heating, number two is for cooling. You can see that that's flicked on. Now this is one degree below. So, you should hear the element flicking, flicking on and firing. And there you go, it's flicked, as soon as it flicks over to 40, it's switched off, and that's where it will remain, until which time it drops below 40. Um, boom. So, I am slightly interested to know if I change the decimal point, what's going on, and if it will flick on more accurately. All right, so you can see there it's at actually at 39.5, 39.4. So it's it's not flicking on. So it is rising. Uh, so I don't think I think it's accurate to one degree. Um, so I'm not really sure why it gives you the decimal points. To be honest. Um, that's something else I might have to check. Fucking fly in my beer. Son of a bitch. Little bastard. <sighs> yeah, that's it then, guys. Configured, should work, wired. Hopefully that's helpful for you guys. Cheers and time for another home brewery.